Now a brown vertical streak with the notch in the top of the cliffs what's left of Bridal Veil Falls. Runs heavily in the springtime and dries up midsummer. Used to run all year long, but some beavers built dams on the river. And that cliff interior is about 190 feet high. And the next three large coves are called the Painted Coves. And a sandstone has very little color. The pale tan. Other colors we're starting to see are caused by minerals embedded in the sandstone and from a spring water comes out from in between the layers of rock. See that spring water coming out about two thirds of the way up the cliff. Now red streaks there. Spring water comes from deep underground and as it's passing in between the layers of sandstone it dissolves the minerals that are in the rock. So it runs down the face of the cliff, leaves a stain of that mineral behind. Just like if you had too much iron in your tap water, leave a red streak at the back of your sink. Now the browns, reds, oranges, and purples you see in this first cove are from iron. See some whites mixed in, that's calcium. Black is manganese. And later on we'll see blues and greens from copper. Hey, look on top of the cliff, you'll see a large crack up there. Looks like it could cave in at any moment. But don't hold your breath. The crack formed over 10 years ago and hasn't changed much since. Have been caving though, next to it and behind it, just about every year since it formed. On average, Pictured Rocks receives one major cave-in per year. Normally happens in the early springtime. Cavens are caused by the waves undercutting the foundation of the cliffs and from the um, water getting into the cracks and freezing. It expands and acts like a wedge.
right side are the caves of all colors created by the waves coming in carving out the soft thin layer of rock you see in the center of those caves gives the waves a foothold to pop off the harder layers of rock and if you look up on top of the cliff you can see what look to be little bushes they're actually old stunted trees it's early in the winter time the waves will crash up against the cliff go up over the top water will freeze on those trees and by winter time probably two or three feet of ice up there and if you look down the shoreline to your left you'll see a formation with an archway that's called lover's leap I wouldn't recommend a jump off of that no matter how much you're in love be jumping into only four feet of water so you can see the archway there of lovers leap again might recognize that from the pure Michigan advertisement campaigns or some of the uh, billboards in the region Typically the ice will freeze 5 to 10 miles from shore out, but as it's forming, the wind and waves will pile the ice up 20 to 30 feet high in front of the cliffs. A point straight ahead of the boat is called Battleship Rock. I'll be up a lot closer to it, but from here you can see the battle. Or, the Indian Head Rock. We'll be up a lot closer to it. From here you can see the profile of the Indian Head.
Now, some people say that the colors on the face of the cliff just in the shore here somewhat resemble the colors of the painted desert. Oh, well, other desert not. I wouldn't know because I've never been to the painted desert. If you use your imagination, you can just about walk right out in the distance over there. That's the reason the pictured rocks received its name from people using their imaginations and seeing pictures on the face of the cliff. Some people see sailing ships and trains, farm scenes. And have one person come up and tell me they saw Bigfoot. Uh, coming up is Indian Head Rock. We'll see it on the left side first and then the right side. Indian Head is about 200 feet high. Highest formation along the pictured rocks. See a hiker up on top, got a reference off all this. If you're having trouble picking out the profile of the Indian's head, the way I see it is with the outside of the point at the waterline as his chin. Above that midway up, there's a large rock outcropping. That's his nose. His nose goes up and arches back along with his forehead to near the top of the cliff. Looks uh, three-dimensional to me. See a jawline with an ear. And the hair and feathers streaming out the back. Looks a bit like the Chicago Blackhawks logo. On the right, uh, 200 foot uh, high formation here. Chins in the water, midway up, large rock outcroppings to the nose. Halfway between his chin and nose, there's a horizontal line in his mouth. Has a couple of stunted trees in it. Kind of looks like he has uh, spinach in his teeth. Jawline comes out of the water up to an ear where the sun's shining on the ear. Hair and feathers streaming out the back. Old man's face, many of a storm. See how the wind and rain has sculptured the rocks up on top.
the next point with the archway is uh, called Grand Portal. Cave in fell down 17 years ago. Archway is now five times larger than it was. Now back before the cave in, you're able to bring a small boat through the archway. Pretty much now you'd have to rock climb. I'll bring up close to the Grand Portal and show you how high the rocks are. This is Spray Falls, about 70 feet high. See a couple swimmers uh, left of the falls there, standing up. So uh, Spring Fred runs all year long. Wintertime forms a huge ice column. With the water still flowing through the center of that column. Ice climbers will hike out here to climb it in wintertime. This is a site of one of Lake Superior's earliest and worst shipwrecks. Happened in 1856. On the side wheel paddled wooden steamship Superior lost its rudder in an October snowstorm. Ship ran aground here right in front of the falls. Storm lasted for three days and broke the ship up into little pieces. Over 35 people lost their lives. And the cliffs extend another mile, turned into a sand beach called 12 Mile Beach, and that ends up way off past the horizon at Sabo Point. Play of doing the park, a uh, number of inland waterfalls. A couple worth seeing are Miners Falls and Asabo Falls. Mentioned the hiking and camping. There's also drive-in campgrounds. There's a couple at the far beach there, 12 Mile Beach and Hurricane River. Sobble Point has a lighthouse, the park service is refurbished. They do uh, guided tours through it in the summertime.
This is an old light. It's called East Channel Grand Island Lighthouse. Built here in 1867. Completed just after the Civil War. Makes it 151 years old. Lighthouse is uh, no longer in operation though. Lighthouse keeper turned off the kerosene lamp for the last time. Over 100 years ago. So it was replaced by range lights in Munising. Range lights are just two lighthouses you line up, puts you in the center of the channel. Those uh, range lights now operate as a sectional light. You can actually see it here. We'll uh, demonstrate it after we see the lighthouse here. Now, this is an old lighthouse built here. In, uh, this uh, lighthouse was built to last. Very little maintenance has been done on it the past century. That's up until about 10, 15 years ago when a committee was formed to help preserve the lighthouse. First thing they did was build the break wall around to protect it from erosion. Also replaced some of the wood siding or did the lantern room up on top. You see the reddish brown stone foundation. That's a Jacobsville sandstone. That was quarried off of Grand Island. Same type of sandstone they used to make brownstone buildings. They had a lot of large quarries up in the Upper Peninsula that uh, supplied the Midwest with the stone. Its main selling point, uh, it's uh, fire resistant. It's got uh, lots of iron in it, so uh, it absorbs the heat without breaking down. That was the last section of private land left on Grand Island. It's about 40 acres. Each person owns a piece of property here, also owns part of the lighthouse. The lighthouse keeper is pretty isolated here. This is built 30 years before Munising was formed. Typically to have his family with them and a small garden. They relied on a supply ship to bring the most of their food and dry goods. And the kerosene to keep the lamp lit. A one lighthouse keeper and his wife lived here with their 12 children. Right and head of the boat. Uh, in town there you'll see a bright red light. That's the uh, front light of the range lights. It's now a sectional light, so how that works is that uh, the light has different zones for different colors of lights. So right now we're in the red zone. That means we need to go to the left of the light to get into the center of the channel line. There's a line that goes right through the center of the channel. And when you're on that line, the uh, light is white. If you get too far off the left, then it's green, so you won't be able to see it change here in a couple minutes. Getting into the center of the channel here, we'll see the uh, light change. From red to white, there it's white now. Then you'd head straight for it and that'd bring it through the center of the channel. 
Like I say, you get too far to the left, it turns green. You'll see it turn green in about uh, three minutes or so. Now you get too far off, the light blinks. Either the blinking green or blinking red. 